I'm reviewing here! Hello everybody, bonjour tout le monde, bienvenue à notre nouveau episode de I'm reviewing here, just kidding. Hi everybody, welcome to another new episode of I'm reviewing here, a podcast where I, Matthew Bussey, watch and review Sight and Sound's top greatest movies of all time. What is Sight and Sound? Google it. What are movies? What are movies? Google it. I don't got the time to explain anything to you, so go away. Just kidding. No, stay. I'm just kidding. I, 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 that's how I talk. Um, I'm in therapy for it, actually. No, I'm not. Um, hi, everybody. How's everybody doing today? I want to apologize, too, if I sound a little echoey. So I just, if, if you've been following my episodes, I just uh, bought a condo uh, here in the city. And, you know, there's no, my office is amazing, but, you know, the ceiling is very, very high. So it does echo like this. Hello. 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 See? So, and that wasn't even, I wasn't even using, using the echo effect on my microphone. That just, that was all real. Yeah. So I do apologize. You know, when I was looking for places to buy, I mean, I, it's not like you can, um, put in a request for there to be a, a, a quiet room to record podcast episodes. in. so, I mean, I want, I wish life was that simple, but you know, it wasn't. So if you're okay with that, uh, then, you know, whatever. And also if you're okay with that chair, wait, hold on. Yeah, my, my little fart chair, then um, I guess I guess I, I guess we'll get along fine. I think we're gonna be good friends. <laughs> wow, this is I think episode twenty three almost at twenty five episodes. Damn I um you know, I, I was going to say I often get asked this, but I have not been asked this at all recently because I haven't been seeing my friends for a while lately. Well, the ones that are actually listening to this, that is. But, you know, I, I kind of wonder, like, what's it been like filming this podcast episode? You know what? I have, I have a lot. Of, I have good advice to give. I love doing this podcast. And, and let me tell you why. Hold on. Just got to push my chair in. This podcast is really fun uh, because any podcast that you do is fun. It's really fun to talk. It's really, really fun to just get your feelings out and be yourself. And it's like writing in a journal, you know, it's like, it's like being on stage talking to people, you know, it's, it's just, there's something about it. It's really, really fun. You know, I was listening to, uh, uh, the unorthodox podcast. So good. It's a very famous, very popular Jewish podcast. Uh, and they had a speaker on who was talking all about what makes a podcast really good. And, and uh, you know, she said a lot of important things. Obviously, you know, your podcast needs to have uh, an objective and you want to stick to that objective and everything. And you also, um, you know, you, you don't want to be lackadaisical. You know, you really want to have energy and everything. I mean, like Nicole Byer, who I've probably talked about a million times already. I'm sorry. But like every episode that she does of her podcast, oh my God, she is just brimming with like... Hello, wow! You know, like she's so wild and happy and hilarious, and we need all that. We we need that so so much. So, I guess most of the time I'm like that. I get nervous though because I don't want to blow out this mic because I can get really really loud, and um, I can get very distracted too. For example, right now there is a gag gift on my desk that somebody gave my dad. It's a frog. It's like a plastic frog that you like hang up and the frog has a very ginormous erection. And I don't know why, but the <laughs> the pee hole is like a centimeter long coming out of the erection. I don't get it. I don't I don't get it and I'm holding it right now. Ugh. Um yeah, they they brought some stuff in the other week and that uh they brought that along probably to make me laugh. Very funny. You guys are so funny, aren't you? Uh, no, it is a good uh, decorative gift. I wonder if I'm going to throw a party. I've thrown like a housewarming party. Guys, I've only th really thrown... Well, it's not really true. I used to live with my two best buddies here in Philly and back in 2016, and we would throw some parties. But like, have I ever thrown a party just me alone by myself? In high school, I did, but there was no alcohol. I didn't drink in, in high school. Uh, I did it one time in college. It was really, really fun. And <laughs> I went to bed when everybody was still there. <laughs> oh, God damn it. I'm so stupid. Yeah, I did that. And I told my roommates, like, I'm going to get up early and clean, I promise. And I got up at, like, I think, like, 9 o'clock. 
and I went down there and my roommates were, they were all film majors and they had already cleaned and put everything away because they were filming a scene right there in the room. And they kind of looked at me like, it's okay, we did it. And I was like, sorry. Yeah. Um, but I swear I've behaved and I've learned a lot and I do, I might do it. I might throw a, oh God, I probably shouldn't say that on a podcast though. Everyone's going to come up and show up and be like, oh, if you come to my party, there's only one rule. Here it is. There are no rules. That's the rule. Okay. No, there are rules. Uh, do not go on my roof. I just don't, if you're coming on my roof, uh, uh, oh, that sounded weird. If you're going on my roof, excuse me. Um, don't be drunk. I went to Temple. There was an incident my senior year where somebody got really drunk and they were having a party on the roof and somebody fell off the roof and died. Yeah, it's really, really scary. But um, I might do it, you guys. I feel it. I feel it in my fingers. I feel it in my heart. Love Actually, 2003, really good movie. Oh, holidays. No, the holidays are too far away. God, do not talk about Christmas right now. I'm going to punch you in the face. Guys, wow. Um, ooh, I just hit my mic. I'm sorry. Um, this is... Today's movie is a movie so recognized and famous worldwide. And I got some thoughts about it. So um, today we're going to review... <laughs> we're going to review a really small movie that no one's heard of. It is called... Are you ready? Star Wars, Episode 4, A New Hope. Luke Skywalker was just a farm boy until he received a mysterious message from a princess. Help me, Obi-Wan Kenobi. She's beautiful. Star Wars, starring Mark Hamill. I'm Luke Skywalker. I'm here to rescue you. Aren't you a little short for a stormtrooper? Harrison Ford. Boring conversation anyway. Luke, we're going to have <laughs> I think we took a wrong turn. Carrie Fisher. Good luck. Alec Guinness. You can't win, Darth. If you strike me down, I shall become more powerful than you can possibly imagine. 20th Century Fox presents the most extraordinary motion picture of all time, Star Wars. Here's where the fun begins. No legendary adventure of the past could be as exciting as this romance of the future. Here they come. May the force be with you in Star Wars. Ooh, listen to that trailer. Oh my God, remember like every old trailer from the 70s and 60s and the 50s and everything, there's always that one trailer voice. Welcome to this, coming soon. Oh, it's good. I just got throwback feels. I mean, I'm not from the 70s, but you know. I would travel if I could go back in time. If I could go back in time, I would like to go to the 70s and see Jaws on the big screen because I would just have so much fun doing that. And The Exorcist, too, because I would love to see people scream. That would be so funny. Actually, no, not The Exorcist. I don't like to go to horror movies with crowded audiences because they're so freaking annoying. Sorry, but they are. One time I saw Paranormal Activity in 2009. It was the second time I was seeing it. The theater I went to, the crowd was so rowdy and rambunctious. There was one point, this woman behind me, she was with her friend. She kept kicking my seat because she kept getting scared. So she was like, oh, uh, uh, sorry, sorry. I'm like, yeah, it, it hurts. Stop kicking my seat, please. There was that. And then there was a point halfway through when she said, I'm going to close my eyes because I'm too scared. Can you tell me what's going on out loud? yeah, people are so freaking stupid. So no, I would not see that in theaters though. But um, if, if I would, I would just go to a matinee. Anyway, Star Wars. Yes, the name, the movie, the franchise. It exists. It is, I mean, I don't need to... T <laughs> I, I keep touching the frog. I'm sorry. Hold on, I gotta move the frog. Go over there. Um, there's no sex in Star Wars. Uh, no, um... Oh my God. I don't really know where to begin with Star Wars. You know, look, I, because a lot of what I'm going to say, you already know, but even if you don't like movies, even if you don't like Star Wars, you know, Star Wars, I mean, come on, you know it, you, you know, the lines, you know, the characters, you know, it's set in space. <laughs> I mean, you know, that music, you know, the, the, that opening, it's like we use it 
an everyday jargon, you know, like I edit a lot at my job and I work with someone who makes her trailers at my job. And a lot of times I'll say things like, okay, like, you know, I remember at the end, like for the credits, do like the star, I'll, I'll call it the star Wars style. You know, I'm like, yeah, do the star Wars style, like have it swipe up, you know, like that. It's, it's, it's incredible how this movie completely took off. And I'll tell you this, look, okay, well, let me cut, let me cut right to the chase. I'm not a star Wars fan. If you love Star Wars like me, if you're a diehard fan, I know you can unfollow if you want to. I understand. But um, look, it's just not for me. I'm just not into space movies. I'm not. Um, my history with Star Wars, let me, I guess I should begin with that. You know, I think when I was seven or six or eight or whatever, I remember it was my birthday and my parents brought down this like big box and it was like a vacuum cleaner box. And I was like, mama, da, what? Well, I don't want a vacuum cleaner, but they shook it and it was like hollow inside. And, and they were like, you know, my mom was like, no, darling, no, it's, it's a trick. Go and open it. And I was like, what? And I opened it and out popped up, out popped out, oh, rest in peace, three VHS tapes, Star Wars, A New Hope, Star Wars Episode Five, Return, uh, The Empire Strikes Back, Star Wars Episode Six, Return of the Jedi. All three of them were on VHS. And I, I didn't watch them that much, like ever. I didn't. They were on our shelf uh, for years and years and years and years and years. Uh, yeah, I just wasn't really into it. I unfortunately grew up with the prequel series. <laughs> I say unfortunately because guys, I'm I'm sorry, but the the prequel series, um, the prequel series, you know, 1999, 2002, 2005, The Phantom Menace, Attack of the Clones, Revenge of the Sith. Guys, I I cannot take them seriously. The acting in it in them, it's just like I'm trying to be nice. I'm trying to be nice. I'm trying to be nice. But I think there was a point in Attack of the Clones. I think I saw that when I was in fifth grade. I think I actually almost walked out because I just couldn't even, I was an idiot in fifth grade. And even I was like, what the heck is this? I mean, the line, the dialogue in Attack of the Clones. But, what does um, Anakin say in Attack of the Clones? I like sand. It's uh, feels good on my fingers. Yeah, and like I love Natalie Portman. Who does she play again? Uh, Patricia or what's her name in it? Wait, what is her name? Padme. Padme. Yeah. Um, but it's just it's ridiculous. It's it's so and you know an Attack of the Clones too. The big fight scene at the end when it's her and Obi Wan and Anakin and they're fighting all the alien animals and the animal jumps up and rips Natalie Portman's back and rips off her clothes so she ends up with a perfect midriff. I'm like, oh come on, really? For the love of God. Uh, damn. So I think I'm, I say that because I think that's why I'm just not really a Star Wars person. I mean, because I grew up with those movies. I did like The Phantom Menace when that came out. And I would always put that movie on if I was like homesick from school, though. And I wouldn't really follow it at all. To this day, I, I do not you, do not ask me anything about The Phantom Menace because I can't explain it. All I know is that Liam Neeson has uh, long hair in it, and there's a really creepy, evil, uh, uh, evil light. No, Jesus, Jedi lightsaber. There's an evil Jedi with a, a lightsaber, and he has a red face, and his name is Darth Maul, and he's really sp spooky but kind of badass. Yeah, so I mean, I enjoyed that, but I didn't take it seriously. I really liked The Force Awakens. The Force Awakens is the one that came out in 2015, and the whole cast came back. Well, Mark Hamill was only in the very last shot, but it was an all-new cast. Daisy Ridley, John Boyega, Oscar Isaac. I mean, I really liked that. That was a fun return to the Star Wars universe. And it was just, it was really good. It was really well done. I mean, it's J.J. Abrams. He's the man. He does so many awesome movies. I loved Ray in it. I love Ray in that movie. Um, and, you know, I was excited for the next movie, Hated the Last Jedi. Don't, uh, And I'm, I'm going to get to this movie in a second, but Hated the Last Jedi. Did not like it at all. I thought the writing was atrocious in it. And then The Rise of Skywalker. Uh, is that what it's called? Yeah, I forget. Um... That was like right before COVID hit, so my 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 memory is a little, um, it it begets me. Does that make sense? I don't know. The, the, whatever. Whatever. The 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 episode nine, I, I just did not like at all as well. So and I feel like the movies just ended on such a disappointing note, you know. So, Force Awakens, I really liked. I think that was probably the best. So this first one, the first Star Wars, I have not seen Star Wars Episode Four. 
I had not seen it in a really long time. When The Force Awakens came out, I actually went on this. I was I was good. I rewatched four, five, and six. I didn't rewatch one, two, three because I was like, it didn't make sense because Star it's, it's Star Wars: The Force Awakens. That's Episode Seven. So I rewatched them, and then I saw The Force Awakens. So this was actually just one of the few times I've sat through and watched Episode Four all the way through. Is it a good movie? Yeah, it's great. It's Star Wars. It's awesome. It's it's great. It, there's so much imagination in it, and I and you know it, it's a very it's a passion project. Uh, it's which I really really like. There's so much trivia about this movie that people obviously know more than I do. Um, episode four, though, it wasn't called Episode Four when it came out. It was just called Star Wars, written and directed by George Lucas. George Lucas was kind of a, a unknown director. George Lucas recently, two, uh, not, uh, what's the math? Four years prior, he came out with this um, excellent movie called American Graffiti, which is like a high school movie set in the 50s. And uh, Ron Howard is in it, Richard Dreyfus, the mom from So Weird. Any So Weird fans here? Oh my God, one of the best Disney shows ever. Mackenzie Phillips, she's in it. American Graffiti, I have not seen it in so long, but it is like one of the best high school movies of all time. And like, everyone always remembers George Lucas for Star Wars. And I'm always like, no, American Graffiti, duh. And they're like, I don't, I don't understand. What are you, what are you talking about? But he had done that, which was very commercial, uh, critically acclaimed when that came out. He'd also done uh, a sci-fi movie called THX uh, 1138, which I have not seen, but it also, I think, uh, is kind of like a bit of a cult classic. Uh, and it, it was also, I think it was well-received. I don't really know a lot about that movie. Robert Duvall is in it. Donald Pleasance. Ooh, Donald Pleasance. Um, but yeah, Star Wars, though, he wrote and directed this. He did not expect this movie to be a hit. No, not at all. And, you know, it's interesting watching Star Wars because when you're watching it, the special effects are great and all that, but it, it does kind of feel like a bit of a, and this is kind of a compliment, it feels like a silly little space B-movie, you know? Like, like Flash Gordon almost, you, you know what I'm saying? It doesn't seem like that type of movie where when you watch it, you go, oh my God, when they made this movie, they must have known there were going to be so many sequels and it was going to become a, an international franchise. No, not with episode four, not with this one. And I think uh, it's interesting because, you know, there's actually not really, in my opinion, there's not a ton of action in this movie. And I feel like even a lot of the Star Wars fans, they don't really love the first one. They seem to like the sequels more. They seem to like The Empire Strikes Back and Return of the Jedi a lot more. I think because maybe there's more action and, you know, the plot goes uh, in so many directions, you know. And, and uh, with, well, spoiler, Darth Vader being uh, Luke and uh, Leia's father and, and all that. But... Uh, yeah, you know, this this first one, Star Wars, though, it, it's like, for me, it's it's a very, it's an easy movie to have on. Um, and I like how it's very, you know, kid-friendly. I like how they made it kid-friendly, even though the poster for the movie is looks like, like a spoof. The poster for the movie looks like the cover of a Playboy porno or whatever. It's Luke holding... <laughs> his lightsaber in the air with his chest out like a six pack like with like six pack abs and then leia is standing in front of him doing a sexy pose and her leg is out and she looks like a model guys start, what, why do they do this in marketing why do they do this in marketing it's not the type of movie but i think it's 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 interesting that i noticed that because you know when this came out and the marketing for it was done i mean yeah they probably thought to themselves like it's just a silly little B movie. It's a silly little B movie action flick. It's going to make a little bit of money, but it's going to be a one movie franchise. And that's all, you know, and it just came out of star Wars. You know, I, there, I even found trivia that Lucas was so sure that the movie wasn't going to do well, that he didn't even go to the premiere of the movie. He actually went to this. Is this actually true? I don't know. Apparently he went on vacation to Hawaii with Steven Spielberg because they were friends and they came up with the idea for Raiders of the Lost Ark, which would obviously later uh, star Harrison Ford. So I like that about Star Wars. I, I like that I, I, about this first movie. I like how when you watch it, you can tell that 
it's it's a fun movie, and George Lucas obviously had a lot of fun making it, and the, the actors did too. But it, it's not trying to be this huge thing, which is rare nowadays in the 21st century. Because in the 21st century, guys, everything, every movie that comes out, every big action flick, it's all about, oh my god, we got to make it a franchise, we got to make it a franchise, we got to make it a franchise. Every movie that comes out. Every action movie. I think that's why I don't like action movies, to be honest. I think because it's like everyone that comes out... They're, they're just you, you I can't take them seriously because the movies you can just tell when they made them that they're they're making them as over the top as possible because they want to make enough money so that they can make sequels I mean it's just how it is right now it's how it's been for years even pre-covid years and years and years and years it was like this so yeah that's kind of my issue with Star Wars and Marvel and you know Fast and the Furious and yeah Sorry, I had to pause for a sec. Two reasons. A truck just went by. And also, I'm thinking about in the last Fast and the Furious, the sequence where they go into outer space. Actually, I'm serious. They actually drive their car into outer freaking space. <sighs> oh, my God. Um. All right. Let's get right to it, though. I'm, I'm getting a little redundant here. And we're, we're already 21 minutes in. Well, do I even need to talk about the plot of this movie? Well, yeah. You know, maybe you haven't seen Star Wars. Or maybe you just, I don't know, it's been a while. But Star Wars is a space opera. It is set in outer space. And there's a lot of wars and a lot of aliens and creatures and humans. And they all intermingle. And they probably, you know, hook up sometimes. But uh, I will say what's a little annoying too, and I promise I'm going to get into the plot. What's annoying about this movie, I watched it on Disney+, Plus and they updated all the special effects. So all the special effects from the 70s, they've all been updated and, and uh, polished, and they all look like brand new now. Why did they do that? Why? Why did they do that? I don't get why they did that. They also did that to E.T. when that came out again, and uh, I think in the 2000s. They made E.T. all CGI, so when E.T.'s like, I'll be right here, he doesn't look like the cute little, you know, animatronic E.T. that we all grew up and loved. He looks like a GIF. He literally looks like a GIF. Yeah, it's just so stupid. I hate when studios do that. But anyway... It's very distracting, too, because it's like this movie's clearly a 70s movie, and then you see them walk, you know, crawling on these, like, alien animals, and the alien animals look like they were made, you know, like, yesterday in 2023. It, it just makes some sense. Okie dokie. Okay. Star Wars Episode Four. When this opens up, there's a big civil war happening. Um, there is a rebel alliance. A rebel alliance is basically a group of uh, rebels, duh, and... Um, they're fighting, they're, they're mad at the Galactic Empire. The Galactic Empire uh, has this big ship called uh, Space Station. I'm sorry, it's not a ship. It's called the Death Star. I keep wanting to call it the Death Eater, but that's Harry Potter. Yeah, the Death Star is this huge uh, space station, and it's a huge super weapon. It has the ability to destroy planets and kill people, blah, blah, blah. It's evil. The Galactic Empire is like, you know, Trump... Uh, but in outer space, and everyone is much, much, much more uh, violent. And, you know, they got those lightsaber weapons, which, how, if, imagine getting hit with a lightsaber. How that would burn so much. Anyway, um, so this is all going on. We learned this in the opening credits. Uh, the rebels have stolen the plans to the Death Star, and Darth Vader, who uh, is. Um, who is Darth Vader? Darth Vader, well, obviously, he's like the baddie in this. But Darth Vader is basically, you know, the head of, uh, I don't freaking know. I forget where, what note I took for that. Darth Vader's bad. That's all you got to remember. Okay, he's bad. Uh, we meet Princess Leia, played by the late, great Carrie Fisher, you know, and she's got the first shot you see her in. She's got that look, you know, the white dress and the cool little side hair uh, uh, perms, you know. Uh, she is an imperial senator, and she's, like, secretly working uh, with the Rebellion, and she has the plans, but uh, she basically delivers this message to this cute little robot that um, walk that rolls around, and he's like, rawr, rawr, and his name is R2-D2, and she basically leaves a message for him that gets encoded in his, you know, computer where she says you know, help me Obi-Wan, Obi-Wan Kenobi, like, I have the plans, you need to help me, you know, things are gonna go bad with, you know, this, this Darth Vader, because he's a meanie, so, uh, she does that, but she gets captured by 
Darth Vader. Um, and then R2D, so there, this, you know, shootout happens and you know the stormtroopers they're they are the the baddies they're the ones dressed in those really cool white uniforms uh those are cool you know the costume design in this movie is is really impressive i do admit but r2d2 he's kind of pals with another robot named uh c3po and c3po is the british guy who always is like oh what in what on earth is going on here you know like that guy uh they managed to get out of uh the space oh just got a text i'm sorry they managed to get out of the spaceship uh while you know there's a uh shootout happening with the stormtroopers and the rebels how they get out is so ridiculous because they literally walk through this hallway where both sides are shooting at each other and neither r2d2 nor c3po get shot once of course but they get out they crash land on this desert called tatooine 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 i think is how you say it i'm sorry star wars fans i'm sorry i think they actually filmed this in tunisia too which is really cool but uh they get there and then they're immediately captured by these little like furry looking people with uh these red capes and they're called uh jawas j-a-w-a and they speak really weirdly they're like oh, yeah, blah, blah, blah. Uh, fun fact uh their language is actually zulu sped up uh never knew that uh, but yeah, they get captured by the Jawas and they're traders, you know, they go out in the desert and they collect like robots and bits and pieces and they trade them to people. They come across this farm, uh, led by, or, uh, housed by this couple named Air, uh, oh my God, Jesus Christ, I'm sorry, I'm talking too fast. Owen and Baru, and they have a nephew, Luke Skywalker, played by Mark Hamill. Uh, Luke is a young guy and he wants to fight. He's a little bit bored with his life. Um, and the Jawa traders show up with, you know, R2-D2 and C-3PO and, um, uh, yeah. And the family, you know, the, his aunt and uncle and him, they basically, uh, get them, you know, they purchase them. Later on, uh... R2-D2 goes missing and he goes to find him and he's attacked by the sand people. Now the sand people are just another group of mean people in the desert. There's a lot of mean, this is Star Wars. There's a lot of people with a lot of uh, mental issues here, a lot of, you know, mommy issues, but uh, he gets attacked by them and he's uh, then rescued by this old man. His name is old Ben Kenobi, but he used to go by, Obi-Wan Kenobi. <gasps> Home Alone face. Home Alone face. Yeah. So that's Obi-Wan Kenobi. He's played by Alec Guinness, Academy Award winner Alec Guinness. Guinness actually got an Oscar nomination for this movie too. Guinness also hated this movie. He hated filming it. He was not a fan of it. Uh, Alec Guinness was most famous for uh, The Bridge on the River Kwai. Uh, that is a movie that he did he won an Oscar for in 19, it came out in 1957, but he did a lot of other ones. He did uh, Great Expectations. He did Oliver Twist. He was in Dr. Zhivago, a lot of David Lean movies. He was a very serious actor. And I think I can understand why he probably didn't really give a crap about Star Wars or anything because, you know, he probably was like, well, this is too silly for me. I want to go and do Shakespeare. So yeah, whatever. I can get that. But yeah, he's, uh, Luke is rescued by Obi-Wan. Obi-Wan is this very, um, used to be the super famous Jedi, like one of the Jedi Knights, and he was a peacekeeper of the Galactic Republic. Um, and he has what's known as the Force. And the Force is a, oh, yeah, here's the note. It's an energy field that penetrates us. I intentionally took that down because it sounds funny because, you know, penetrate, ha ha, lol, just kidding. Um, yeah, but the force he has. Now, the force is basically like magic. Uh, you know, you like lift up your hand and it's like, you know, people, it's kind of like Carrie, like Carrie, the horror movie Carrie. It's like telekinesis. I really wish I had the force because I could get people to shut up. I'm anti-violence, but like if somebody was talking too much, I could be like, zip it, and I could like, you know, make their mouth shut. So that would be pretty cool. But, you know, Obi-Wan tells Luke, oh, oh, not everybody has this. You have to practice. And uh, Luke really wants to, you know, be a, uh, a Jedi. And uh, he goes back home uh, and he finds that 
uh, his aunt and uncle had been killed by uh, the stormtroopers. You know, they basically blew up his home, so he has no one left now. It's just him, C-3PO, R2-D2, and Obi-Wan Kenobi. Um, and Luke shows Obi-Wan this message that R2-D2 had left of Leia saying, you know, I uh, help me, you know, we help the, the rebellion. And I feel like Obi-Wan is like a little bit, he doesn't really want to help out at first, but he kind of goes into it because he probably sees a lot of potential uh, in um, in Luke. And he also explains to him that, you know, he fought in the Clone Wars. Uh, and he also, you know, mentions too that, Ob that uh, Darth Vader was a pupil of Obi-Wan. Wink, 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 wink. Episode one, episode two. Yeah. If you can make it through those movies, you'll see what happens. We all know the story. But, uh, yeah. So they go on this trip. Uh, this is where, you know, we get to see more of the creative side of George Lucas. We see a bunch of different looking aliens. Uh, they go to this cool little bar. Uh, and there's that really catchy song. Do, 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 do. You know, that song plays. This is where Obi-Wan finally shows that he's actually not just a frail old man. He's actually a real badass. You know, there's this guy who's giving Luke a hard time. And Obi-Wan is like, woo, woo, and he cuts off this alien's arm. I keep calling them aliens. I don't know if that's like racist. I'm sorry. I don't know what else to call them. Be beings. Okay, I'll call them beings. Yeah, because like it, I never understand in Star Wars, like who's human and who's alien and who is both. I mean, do they like, do they like have sex in Star Wars? I don't know if they do. Um, when they were filming this movie, though, oh, my God, everybody was hooking up with Carrie Fisher, allegedly. She alleges that she and Harrison Ford had a little love affair. And then she also alleges that um, uh, she and Mark Hamill used to kind of hook up a lot, too. <gasps> that was a naughty set. Wow, that was a really, really naughty set back then. Um, it was bound to happen. It was the 70s. Are you kidding? Everybody was having sex and kissing and doing it with everybody and it probably would have been a good set to meet people too you know on star wars yeah it'd be pretty cool um so they go they eventually meet han solo and han solo is played by none other than what's his name what's his name tom cruise no harrison ford is han solo solo is a very cocky handsome pilot and he like he's like a crook too i mean he's got uh uh, a price, you know, he has a price to pay. He has to pay this local mobster, this big, ugly ass slug named Jabba the Hutt, who was like, Oh, yeah, go, but pay me back my money, man. Yeah, you know, and Han is like, I'll get it to you. And he um, basically agrees to help them out. Again, I'm like totally paraphrasing, like, uh, really uh, summarizing all of this. I'm kind of just going to skip a little bit mid mid midway through here. They go, they find Princess Leia, they rescue her, they fight. Obi-Wan and Darth Vader finally end up in the same room together and they have their fight. And I'm sorry, this fight was terrible. Guys, I, I couldn't take this fight seriously. I know it was the 70s and I know Alec Guinness was an older guy and obviously I wasn't expecting him to like do flips or anything. And also, you know, if you don't know already, James Earl Jones voiced... Uh, Darth Vader in this. He did not play him, but he voiced him. And James Earl Jones, I mostly remember him from The Sandlot. He played, you know, the man next door who you think is a baddie, mean guy the whole time. But he's actually nice. Sandlot is so good. Why is The Sandlot not on this list? God damn it. God damn you, sight and sound. But they fight. I say this is a bad fight because it is just such a stupid fight. They, they're not, they have lightsabers and they're like, I wish you could like see what I'm doing, but it's just so bad. It's so weak. They're just like, dur, dur, dur. it's like they're walking towards each other as they do it. They're barely sweating at all. It was just a little ridiculous. I, that's that I kind of had, I cringed a little bit at that and uh, at that scene, but Darth Vader kills Obi-Wan. And then, you know, Luke, I just, it's a sad moment, but I did kind of laugh because Luke just goes, no, <laughs> That's what he yells. Uh, no, nothing. I'm not making fun of Mark Hamill. I just thought it was kind of funny. But um, they do that. Uh, and, you know, long story short, Luke manages to get uh, into one of the planes. And he remembers what Obi-Wan tells him about the Force. You know, use the Force. The Force is in you. And he does it. And the rebels are fighting with uh, Luke and... Oh my god, Chewbacca! I didn't even talk about Chewbacca. Chewbacca's the hairy little Bigfoot guy who's like... 
you know that guy and he and han are like bffs chewbacca's like kind of like uh like a pet to him I, well he chewbacca doesn't really have like a big role in this but yeah he's there anyway totally forgot about that but um yeah so luke is fighting and he uh basically drops these torpedoes into the uh into the uh death star into the exhaust port to be more precise and everything blows up and oh it's great everyone cheers and then leia it ends with leia uh, giving luke and han medals you know and there's a big crowd of people and everyone's clapping and it's happy and then then the movie ends that's it yeah it ends you expect star wars to be like a one one time movie you know they, they again they, it's all just in one movie it could be a movie by itself but it was a hit. People loved it. The movie made over $500 million when it came out. It beat Jaws as the highest rated movie uh, of all, highest grossing film of all time. Uh, and then E.T. beat that later. Oh my God. So basically Spielberg and Lucas, they just like, you know, they obviously, you can tell that they're rich. But um, yeah, people loved it though. People were crazy for this movie. And uh I think, you know, in, in rewatching Star Wars, I, I learned one thing. Um, well, I've kind of already known this. I just didn't really think about it a lot. But look, you know, to be, for it to be 1977 and to go to the movies and to see a movie this epic and amazing and imaginative and creative, of course, of course, it must have been absolutely amazing. I think the reason I'm not a Star Wars fan is because I'm not from that era, you know? Uh, I'm not. I grew up in an era where uh, there were blockbusters, of course. Yeah, The Mummy. Are you kidding? The Mummy is like one of my favorite movies of all time. But I grew up in the 90s, so I had already kind of seen these action movies from the olden days. And, and, I, and so I was used to it already. You know, I was kind of used to it. And it's not that there hadn't already been action movies in, in uh, 19... This movie came out in 1977. Of course there were. But Star Wars, I mean, took it 25 million steps further. I mean, they really pushed it with the special effects. So I can totally understand why there are, to this day, die-hard fans of this series. Um, I think, personally, the first three are the best. This, Empire Strikes Back, and Return of the Jedi. People think George Lucas directed all three. He did not. He did not direct the next two. He directed the, the prequel series, but no, he didn't direct the next two. He kind of was like, I'm done. Like, no, I just wanted to do one movie. Um, I think he co-wrote uh, the sequels. Hold on. Wait a second. Oh, why do I do this to myself? Oh, I just typed in Return of the Jedi. And then what came up was Gangsta Pat. Why did that autocorrect it to Gangsta? Who the hell is Gangsta Pat? I don't even freaking know. Yeah, no, but... um. Long story short, though, George Lucas, you know, he he helped with the story. He did. He and another director named Lawrence Kasdan, they uh, helped out with the story, you know, and they they helped write the scripts for the, the sequels, the main sequels, you know. But they were the best ones. I mean, it's all about Mark Hamill, Carrie Fisher, and and uh, Harrison Ford, and 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 you know Chewbacca and Darth Vader. They're the best ones. Those are just the best movies. I feel like they just tried to. They keep trying to revitalize it. And it's just not working out. Um, you know, I love Adam Driver, but even in The Force Awakens, I did really like that. But even in that movie, the whole Ben subplot, it, uh, I just, it wasn't really for me. Not for me. Um, do I recommend Star Wars though? Hell yeah. If you haven't seen it already, go see it. It's a classic. Even if you don't like action movies, try it. Just try it, you know, try it. Oh God, why am I talking like that? Yeah, I mean, honestly, do it. Uh, this movie is available on Disney+. Plus. Disney+, Plus uh, has the rights to all the Star Wars movies. As I said before, though, they stupidly updated all the special effects in this, which I don't like. But if you can get past that, if you can get past Obi-Wan and Darth Vader's really um, badly choreographed fight sequence at the end, um, then I think you'll like it. I think another thing, too, that... Um, I liked about Star Wars is Alec Guinness. Now, I know Alec, rest in peace, I know that he didn't like this movie at all, but he is great in it. There's something about old movie, or there's something about action movies where you see old people that you don't expect to be badass, be badass, that is so satisfying, you know? Like, do you remember that action movie Red? 
it's it came out in 2010 and it's got Bruce Willis, Helen Mirren, John Malkovich, Morgan Freeman, Mary Louise Parker. I mean, Helen Mirren is what, like in her 80s now, I think? That movie came out and she is this older woman and you, to watch her like get a machine gun and kill these baddies and karate chop, I mean, it's so cool. It's amazing. And I think that's one of the great things about this is that, you know, Alec Guinness, it's just great to see him on sta- on screen, you know? He, he really, like, I, he was one of my favorites in this, in this movie. And, um, yeah, great actor. Definitely check out his other movies. I'm sure his other movies are probably on this list. But Star Wars, Disney+, Plus, check it out. Um, wow, 40 minutes already. You know, these episodes are getting a little bit longer. This has um, been a very fun one, though. This has been a fun one because this is a movie that, like, absolutely everybody knows Uh, so it was really fun to really kind of go back and re-explore it, and I'm happy I did. I'm just not a fan, but you know what? This movie, though, it's going to forever be a classic. It's going to forever be iconic, and um, I'm glad it got made. I'm glad that it is what it is, and I'm glad that Lucas wasn't aiming to make this huge franchise. I think those were the best kinds of movies, you know? So um, it's different. Yeah, it is, and uh, it's kind of refreshing in a way, so... I check. I would definitely check it out. Thank you guys for tuning in. Don't forget to tune in every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday for new episodes of I'm Reviewing Here. Uh, you can follow me on Instagram at I'm Reviewing Here. You can also follow me personally at Mabussy, M-A-B-U-S-S-Y, because my name is Matt and my last name is Bussy. No, I'm not talking about Bussy like the inappropriate Bussy. It's just my last name, all right? Shut up with the Bussy jokes. Shut up. Uh, yeah, no. It's been fun, though. Don't forget to rate, review, subscribe. Uh, share this episode with everybody. Share all the episodes. Catch up. Uh, it's really, really fun. I got some really different movies coming up that I'm really interested in watching. So I will see you on Friday. Thank you. Bye-bye. And may the force be with you.